Hello everyone, my name is Abhinav and I'm working as a BMS Algorithm Development Engineer at the Civil Lab. In this video, we will explore what are on the different tests that, we, that one can perform on different determined cells in order to understand how they behave and what are all the different cell characteristics. So, before we head into the main part where we talk about cell testing, we will see why exactly cell testing is required and what exactly is cell testing. So, in real life applications, especially EV applications, cells can place in different kind of situations such as different tamping temperatures or different changing temperatures, different pressures, different altitude, different discharge current, different charging current, different storage conditions uh, and different types of humidity, different cycle number and therefore different aging characteristics. So in order to understand all of this, cell testing must be performed. So what exactly is cell testing? Cell testing is to subject a particular cell or a set of cells to all these different scenarios and then analyze what are all the outputs, how exactly the cell behaves by analyzing the different voltage curves or basically the resistance curves, power curves, energy bands, etc. So therefore by studying such uh, type of different situations that the cell can face, we can, put, we can choose the right set for the right application and also we can try to simulate this kind of situations using what is called as a cell model. So not only can it be used to understand the cell characteristics in real life, but also the cell model can be developed and the complete aspects of the cell can be analyzed using the existing testing data. So what are all the different types of tests that one can perform on a particular lithium ion cell? So here is the complete list of all the tests that are available in order to perform and understand what exactly is the behavior of the cells. So starting with some simple tests, what is called as capacity test or static capacity test, where the cell is subjected to a constant current discharge. So that is what the first one corresponds to, constant current discharge test at ambient temperature and also at different temperatures. So as per ISO standards, not only is it tested at ambient, that is 25 degrees Celsius, but also at variety of other temperatures such as minus 20 degrees, minus 10, 0, 25, 35 and up to 60 degrees Celsius. So same thing is done not only for discharge but also for charge. So under constant current charge conditions, so at ambient temperature and at different ambient temperatures also the test is performed. So by performing this, the available capacity of the cell both during discharging and charging at the room temperature and at different current rates and also at different ambient temperatures we are able to understand what exactly is the behavior of the cell. Next coming to a slightly more advanced form of testing or this pulse test. In the pulse test, we have pulse power characterization test, which is basically subjecting the cell to different pulses of current. So this can be performed yet again at ambient temperatures, that is at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, and also at different temperatures. So once again, as per ISO, we do the testing at minus 20, minus 10, 0, and 15, 25, 35, 45, and up to 60 degrees Celsius. So then we come to again a bit more set of advanced tests in, our, in, in the same type of test category that is what is called as dynamic pulse power characterization where the rate of pulses or the nature of pulses is changed. So basically that is nothing but the current supplied per pulse will be changed. So this then also can be modified into performing what is called as dynamic stress test. So here not only are the pulses staged but also the duration of the pulses and also the magnitude of the pulses is staged. So this can once again be performed both at ambient temperature and at different ambient temperatures. Next coming to what is called as non-destructive type tests or basically internal structural tests. We have two types of tests mainly. So one is what is called as electrochemical impeded spectroscopy which gives the complete analysis of how the chemical processes inside the cell takes place at different status or basically different points in the cell's operation. So starting with the brand new or fresh condition to age to end of life. So all of this can be analyzed by performing what is called as electrochemical impeded spectroscopy where the complete chemical behavior of the cell can be analyzed at each and every state of the life of the cell. Then coming to X-ray diffraction, this is once again to see how exactly the internal structure of the cell starts to degrade over time. So this is basically another non-destructive method where the complete internal imaging at microscopic level is done. Next coming to thermal abuse test. So basically this is to simulate and to completely understand how the cell behaves at different temperatures. 
starting with again room temperature and then going to extremely high temperature such as plus 80 plus 90 plus 100 degrees to see how the cell will survive at such temperatures then coming down to much lower temperatures that is minus 30 minus 40 minus 50 degrees celsius and again exposing the cell or basically soaking the cell to, uh, at these temperatures at at least minimum of 30 minutes so once again we come to thermal soak test so not only is it performed at extreme temperatures but also at ISO regulated temperatures that is starting at minus 20 and going up all of this on the way up to 60 degrees Celsius. So this is what is called as thermal soap test. So this is what is called as thermal abuse test or basically thermal performance test. So not only is it soaked or not only is it kept at these temperatures but also it is discharged, charged and also cycled continuously in these temperatures. Then coming to the most important aspect which basically tells how many times a cell can be used is basically what we categorize under aging test. So under aging test, we have two type of tests. Basically one is called as calendar test and the other one is called as cyclic aging test. So under calendar test, basically it is nothing but storage test where the particular set or particular sample cell is stored at different temperatures. One is called as cold temperature, one is called as hot temperature and the other one is called as OCV. So OCV is basically disconnecting the cell from all of the loads and then storing it at different temperatures. So also the same type of storage test can be performed at different ages or basically at different status of a particular cell. So apart from which there is also basically cyclic aging where the cell is subjected to multiple charge and discharge cycles up to 1000, maybe 2000, maybe 3000 cycles and then over time the complete capacity or basically how much energy is lost over the complete set of cycles is noted. And then coming to the most advanced type of aging test which is called as a drive cycle test. So drive cycle test is basically subjecting it to real life driving situations where how exactly the cell or battery pack is loaded and unloaded under different driving situations such as city driving or highway driving or suburban driving. This can be performed on the cell and seen how exactly the capacity changes over time. So these are all the different type of tests one can perform on a particular cell, a set of cells and overall an entire battery pack as well. So next we will see what are all the different results one can expect from such tests. So starting with some of these most simple tests which is the static capacity test. Here you can see if you discharge the cell at different current rates, how exactly the voltage curve or how exactly the voltage capacity curve changes with respect to different current rates. So here you can see the same cell being subjected to different current rates. So starting with very low current at 0.3C and then heading all the way up to 2C, which is two times the existing capacity. So you can see how exactly the amount of capacity goes on decreasing as in when the amount of current drawn from the cell goes on increasing. So the same test can also be performed at different temperatures. So at different temperatures, you will see that the capacity goes on decreasing as when the temperature goes on decreasing because the available energy inside the cell also goes on decreasing at lower temperatures. So you can see that at temperatures such as minus 10 and minus 20, less than 50% of the total capacity of the cell is available. This is because inside the cell there is more resistance, thereby allowing the cell to rapidly deteriorate more compared to at higher temperatures. So also here you can see how exactly the cell behaves under pulse current. So this is what is called as pulse cover characterization which is performed at ambient temperatures where you can see a set of pulses or a series of pulses is applied in regular intervals at different state of charge to see what exactly is the pulse response and the pulse behavior of the cell over the complete SOC range. The same test can also be performed at different temperatures to see how exactly the pulse response will be at higher and lower temperatures. And then coming to the last one, which is basically the cell's behavior during aging. So on the right side, you can see the graph that corresponds to capacity fading or basically how much capacity is lost over the complete set of cycles. So here in this sample, we have seen that there are 400 cycles. So this cell has reached its end of life by the time 400 cycles has been completed. And you can see over the complete 400 cycles, how exactly capacity deteriorates. And on the left hand side, you can see how much the resistance changes over the period of 300 to 400 cycles. So the resistance goes on increasing as and when the cell goes on easy. So this same set of tests can also be extended to 
drive cycle type test and dynamic stress test at different ambient temperatures. So to summarize, in this video, we have seen what are all the different type of tests that can be performed on lithium ion cells and on battery bags and some of the results that we can interpolate from the type of tests and understand how exactly cell can age, how the cell can behave under different current, under different loads, under different pulses, at different temperatures and also at different state of health. So thank you for watching this video. I hope this video was useful.